Hey everybody, I just wanted to give you a quick peek into the file I've created to prepare for this year's documenting my December stories. Um, as you can see, I use Canva to do all of my memory keeping. Um, so this particular project you're looking at in my Canva account, I have already created the Canva file. Um, so I'm going to be doing a 10 by 8 album this year. And um, instead of printing 10 by 8 pictures, maybe, you know, you'd order a uh, 10 by 8. I do a, um, I size my artboard to be 10 and a quarter by 8.125, which is uh, an 8. So, uh, yeah, 10 and a quarter by 10 and an 8, or 8 and an 8 so that you can have your page fit more snugly in the page protector. So this right here is the size of this um, Canva file. So I name it the year December stories. And then I typically put the size album that it is in my file name, just so I can quickly see it. I can reference it. If I ever do a search in my um, projects, because maybe I didn't, put this particular project in the right folder when I created it. Um, maybe I'm having a hard time finding it. I can do a search of 10 by eight and all of my 10 by eight projects will come up. So that's the reason behind putting the um, size of the album in the file name. Okay, so this, even though I'm using a 10 by eight album, I have sized it to be 10.25 wide by 8.125 tall. Um, that way you get a little bit of an oversized print and it fits a little bit more snugly in the page protector. If you have followed along with me before in any of my preparing my files for print videos, you'll know already that I use typically a 12 by 12 canvas to put multiple pages on, uh, multiple photos, multiple print pages onto, and I print the 12 by 12 with persnickety prints, and then I cut them all up and I put them in my albums. I don't typically order single photo prints. Um, so that's why it doesn't matter to me that I can do 10 by, a, or 10 and a quarter by eight and an eighth. Uh, if you print at home, you should also be able to have a little bit of wiggle room on how large or what size it is you're printing. Um, but if you are typically printing eight by tens and you are printing them with a printer that prints eight by tens, um, that's kind of the, the size that you are kind of stuck with unless you um, save it on a larger canvas size and order that size print. So um, it's definitely doable. That's how I do it. And um, that's how I have this file set up. So, all right. Um, <clears throat> I have started um, playing with the digitals from December, uh, from this December daily collection from 2024 from Allie Edwards. Um, none of, it, it, some of these may turn into real pages that actually make it into my album. Um, some of them may not. It just really depends on, um, the stories that I have to tell once December actually happens and, um, whether or not what I put together works for the photos and the amount of journaling I have for those stories. So, um, let's just get started. I want to show you what I've done. And then there are a few of these pages that I'm going to recreate right here in front of you so that you can see how I did what I did. Um, I, nothing is crazy, nothing super tricky. Um, I do have a pro account, and so um, I do utilize the Magic Eraser in the background a remover tool, which are both pro features. Um, so I do want to just let you know that in advance, so you will be seeing a little bit of that. Um, the pro account for me is totally worth it because of those two features, as well as the fact that you can make folders. Um, I'll give you a peek inside of the folder that I have made for um, this year's products and how I keep those organized. So these are just a couple of, of things I've put together. Um, so let's just start with this. This would be like a full page printed, um, slip right into the overall page protector. So be a photo up here. I'm kind of thinking this will be my first title page. Um, kind of thinking I might add some like gold glitter stars, like kind of danced in around here. 
I'm also kind of thinking about this 2024, printing this separately alone on a piece of vellum and then running it through my mink machine and then fussy cutting just around, you know, the outside of the edge of the gold stroke tart and then layering it on top of um, what I have here. I might just print it like this. Who really knows? I'm really not sure. Um, but I do know how to use a mink machine now and I'm super stoked to put all kinds of foiling all over my album because when is there a better time than December stories to have gold foiling? Um, all right. So that is kind of what I'm playing on here. Uh, big photo. Maybe it's a photo of who knows what it's going to be. I don't know. Maybe it gets chopped up into, you know, like a collage of photos. Maybe this is like a highlights page of what's to come in the album. Maybe they're all black and white photos. I really enjoy mixing in black and white photos with colorful embellishments. I feel like what that does is it allows each item to stand on its own and get the attention that it deserves. The colorful embellishments um, are colorful and bold and they pop and they draw attention to themselves because of that. But then also the photos, because they're black and white, look completely different, but are high contrast and bold and um, they tell their own story separate from the colorful embellishments. Oftentimes when you have lots of different photos and they're all colorful and then you have colorful embellishments, your eye is like jumping around, not really quite sure what to look at. And um, so nobody really gets the attention they deserve. So that might be really kind of fun to do um, like a grid up here of um, like a square grid and make them all black and white and maybe have it be, you know, a highlight page or a TOC table of contents as to kind of what's to come in the album, like the favorite shots or maybe, I'm not sure. I don't know. There's lots and lots and lots of options. So this is just something I was playing around with. Um, I'll show you how I created this little row of hearts. This is using a couple different hearts and some of them um, have some parts erased. Some have the background removed but I will recreate this for you and show you how I made that. Um, right over here, I really love these trees. Uh, colorful trees this year are, I think, really going to be my jam. So um, this is a page that could easily be printed as a 10 by 8 and stuck into your page protector, or it could be just this section right here, and maybe it's a 6 by 8. It could be in a 6 by 8 album. It could be a six by eight insert. Um, it could be a fold open to, ooh, I like that idea. This could be, you know, maybe this goes on this side and it folds right here. And then whenever you open it up, you reveal um, some bigger photos underneath or something. I think I'm gonna actually try that. Um, okay, so then what you're looking at right here is just a couple ideas for some three by four journaling cards. Um, this is actually from the three by eight insert pack. Um, and this is one of the little hearts. I'm totally digging the hearts this year, colorful trees and these super fun, like whimsical watercolor painted hearts are fantastic. So I like those a lot. Um, this is a three by four card that I just kind of put together with a four by six and, um, one of the I think it's either the vellum or the transparency. Maybe it's just the specialty 10 by 8 paper pack. Um, it had outlines of the ornaments. I will kind of show you how I made that. Um, this right here obviously will not get printed like this, but I was just kind of seeing like, what if on a separate piece of paper, I took this, this uh, tree stamp and maybe I put the, um, the light strings on it and then maybe the tree stamp is going to be white, but I give it like a little bit of a, a stroke or, or I print it onto a colored background or something so that I can hand cut around it. And I run it through the foiling machine, the mink machine, and I, you know, get the, get the string of lights and little stars, um, to be foiled. And then I would cut it out and lay it on top of this, um, striped background with one of the gold glitter stars. So this is definitely a mock-up. It's not, it's more of like a digital representation of what I would create physically. Um, so this would be like a true hybrid card right here. Um, this is just kind of mocking up the idea so that I kind of know what I was thinking. This is just a layering of multiple items right up here. And uh, so those are just some, you know, three by four ideas. I don't know. I may use some, I may use none. I may use all of them. Who knows what will happen. 
Um, all right, what's going on here? I know that there's something right here that is not showing up right now. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure why. Um, all right, so the, also three by fours. Um, this right here is a portion of the, um, I think it came from the prompt sheets and it has a little conversation. I would say like a little conversation arrow or triangle down here at the bottom. And while for the full sheet with lots of them, I totally dig it. Um, but for a single three by four, like little speech bubble card, I, I just kind of got rid of it because I felt like it didn't fit the space very well. Um, and I'll show you how I use the magic eraser tool and the background remover to kind of edit this piece. Um, let's see here. Ah, uh, this is another one of the, um, specialty, no, I'm sorry, prompt pages. Um, it came from the same file that this guy right here comes from. I really like it. And because I'm doing a 10 by 8 album, I think that I would like to do kind of a spread like this where, um, I, my overall journaling is down here. So I've already put my text box down here. I have decided I'm going to use Remington noiseless nine point font throughout my entire album. Um, and so I just dropped that in right there. So it's already set to go. I can just type in my journaling. I'm not really sure how I want to deal with these trees and these numbers. Um, I don't really want to cover too much of them up. I don't want to put a weird size photo on it. I'm not really sure. I don't know. Maybe I'll do like a word phrase strip stack style or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, and then, you know, I thought two large photos off to the side would be really nice. Maybe it's three large photos. Maybe it's one huge photo. I'm not really sure. This is just me playing around with a couple ideas, getting stuff onto into my files so that um, it can morph and become something different when I actually have photos and stories, or maybe it's perfect the way that it is for something that happens. I don't know. Um, so typically I am a huge sketcher. I love sketching down my ideas and a notebook on a random piece of paper or a post-it note. Um, an idea will come to me and maybe I get inspired by something. Maybe I am thinking about a past page I made or a page I've seen and I will sketch down just a quick little drawing of a plan. And so often when it comes time to do any memory keeping project, I'll gather up on my little sketches and I'll go to Canva I'll open up my file and I'll start creating those sketches digitally. So by doing what I've done here, I've for the most part skipped the sketching stage. I just opened up my file and just started moving some things around and playing with stuff and um, just kind of just playing with the digital. So almost like, you know, pulling out your physical products and, and pairing things together and, and moving things around, making a discard pile, like a favorites pile, um, making a plan playing with it. So that's what I'm doing. Um, this is going to be like my working document. Um, anytime I get inspired by something, I'm going to come here and try to mock it up real quick and see what happens. Um, this page, this page is a lot. Um, it kind of started like this. Um, it morphed into this. There's another version of it in like at the very end of my file. I'm not sure how this is actually going to come together in real life. Um, we'll see. But this um, I am loving currently, but it's a lot. I have to say it's it's a busier, has more elements to it than I typically have on a page. And it's much less photo heavy than I am used to. But what if I have just one photo and maybe this is just, you know, a bokeh photo of my Christmas tree. And then I have you know, three tiny little stories that are a sentence long of something I want to remember or something I want to just make note of that has to do with the bokeh tree. Maybe the tree has nothing to do with those little um, details. Who knows? Um, but I will walk you through how I created this little section right here because there's quite a bit of little things that I did to make that happen over there. So this is a uh, variation on that page. And Let's see. All right. So this right here, this is one of the four by six cards that comes in the main kit. And I was just trying to figure out a way to like, what kind of circle frames does Canva have that I can use and not have to create a custom one for this section down here? Or what can I use to pull this out and maybe overlay onto a four by six photo? 
Um, this didn't really go very far, but at least I know more now as to what I'm dealing with. And um, yeah, so again, just plain, just checking things out. Sometimes I play longer. Sometimes it morphs into something better. Sometimes it just doesn't. Um, this is one of the outside the page protector size pages. Um, I just prepped it with all these little photo squares um, just in case I want to fill all these spots with photos. I don't have to prep that anymore because it's already done. Now, if maybe this one I don't want a photo, I can just delete it and I can add text there or I can leave it blank for an embellishment. Um, there's lots of different things you can do here, but just by doing this little bit of adding the frames, that's one less thing I have to do when I actually come to this page, if I decide I want to use it. Um, this is just me playing with a couple of the pieces. I'm not really going to show you anything here. There's nothing, nothing special here. I didn't use any tools or any techniques or anything. I just uh, grabbed a couple of different digital files uh, from this year's collection and just layered them up. So probably won't use this, but I messed with it anyways. And I find that when I make something, it is too easy to just duplicate the page. Like don't delete it. Just push it down to the bottom of your document because you never know when you're actually going to want to use it or use a portion of it. And you shouldn't have to recreate it. Just keep it just at the end of your file. All right. So this holiday interview sheet came with the, um, the prompt pages, I think. And I have two kiddos that I want to have filled this out. And I would like them immediately to be different, like when I look at them without seeing the, the um, handwriting. So the green is the original that comes in the file. And then I edited it to make it red. And um, I'll go through the steps showing you how I did this. Um, while there is quite a bit of editing options um, because of the way the file is built, we don't have a ton of control over this. Um, so anyway, I'll walk you through that and how I got it to red right here. And um, okay, so these are just some four by six cards that I dropped in here to get color samples from. Uh, I got color samples from this one to see, okay, well, what are all the different colors that are in this kit? And that's why I put that there. And then the deck to halls I put in here because I wanted to find a font that Canva offers that is similar so that if I wanted to kind of recreate this style with different words, I could. So let's see, this is Good Time Grotesque. Um, and it's, I believe it is a free font in Canva. I don't think you have to have, oh, I lied, I'm sorry. Um, it is a pro font. Um, you can tell it's a pro font because it's got that little crown right there. Um, so. There's a ton of other fonts that are not pro fonts, um, but that is the one that I found that I liked that I felt was super close to um, this. It's not an exact match by any means. You can tell just by looking at the C that it's not at all the same, um, but it is pretty darn close. And if you're not comparing two different uh, words with a C over here made from this and a C over here made from this, then you know you should be fine. Um, this right here is the specialty, I think, uh, four by six, three by four pack journaling, specialty journaling pack, I think. Um, I love the joyful. I love the little like square shaped words that are in this pack. And while they're on four by six cards, I think they would be super fun to make really large and you could fill a four by four space for, that um, page protector you could you could do it bigger um, you could do you know six by eight you could you could do this whole page if you wanted uh, with the traditions when I think it's a little bit wider than it is tall so it would be really good for rectangular areas um, so anyway this is just me messing around um, I do a lot of just messing around like see what's going to happen uh, again, beautiful colorful trees I love them um, I just paired these things together because I wanted to, and I wanted to see what would happen when I grabbed the December that has, oh, hello, the routines and, and um, kind of cropped down in on it and paired it with the um, paper from the, I think it's from the, what is this, the large die cut pack, die cut bundle, something like that. Um, prompt die cut bundle. That's where the documenting, that's where I think all of these actually came from is the die cut bundle. So 
anyway, just playing around. Um, I view this document like brainstorming. There are no wrong ideas. Just throw them all out there. If you're going to use them, use them. If you're not, it's fine. Um, so you definitely don't lose points for throwing out bad ideas because bad ideas often turn into good ideas or they spark good ideas or whatever. There's really no bad ideas. There's just ideas that get picked and ideas that don't get picked. So this is an idea that didn't get picked. So after I made this, um, you know, Christmas time is here thing. I thought I wanted to put some stars along the top, but it's just a lot. It's very busy. Um, so instead of deleting it or just removing the stars and keeping it the way it was, I kept this version of it because maybe my future self will think it's not a lot and that it's perfect. And then I don't have to redo it because I've already done it. Um, here is, uh, here's a more original version of what this page looks like because this loving card is actually green um, when you open it up in the document it is not tan um, not like these two up here it's green so I'll show you how I made that so let's just get started let's start with this page all right so a couple different things that we need let's um, add a blank page here we're going to go over here to bum, 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 to wherever they are there's a folder um, aha, DD2024. All right, we're gonna look at all of them. I know that I need a 10 by 8 transparency. In fact, I think it's this one. Nope. Is it this one? Nope. Oh, you know what? I think what's happened is my Canva file has been open for a little while, and so it's having a hard time connecting for some reason. So I'm just gonna refresh the page. It's gonna kind of refresh a few things, um, but that's okay because then we'll get our photo. We'll get our images back. All right. So anytime you refresh, you'll find that it takes you all the way to the top page. Luckily, we weren't that far from the top. And um, it kind of resets whatever you got going on over here. So let's just see if we can find 2024. Oh, that's day in the life. Okay, yeah. So it really reset me. So that's fine now. <clears throat> Okay, this is papers. This is uh, from another year of uh, December Daily, but I know that I keep all my December Daily stuff in one folder. So there's one folder and I name it December Art Files. And typically I will make a folder for each year of the Allie Edwards um, collection. And then I will create folders inside that folder to house different things. Um, it's not always the same. I'm not always consistent because sometimes I will organize it a certain way and then throughout that year's process of creating, I find that it really wasn't helpful to have that many folders or that I really need more folders or that, you know, whatever. And so I change it the next year. I don't go back and clean up that folder. Um, so then I also have, you know, other random things, some, maybe some December elements, maybe that I pulled from other kits that don't, they weren't actually December daily products. Um, over the years, I've collected a lot of December words that have nothing to do with, or they have everything to do with December and the holidays and Christmas and all of that, but they are not tied to a particular um, main kit. Maybe they are files that I got from a um, prep day. Maybe they're files that were just purchased um, lots of years ago. Maybe they are files that at one point um, Allie gave away, I think it was 12 days of um, Christmas quotes. Maybe they were from movies. Um, anyway, there's a lot of them. So I have those in here. Um, oh, and it looks like I also have some um, from In a Creative Bubble. Um, I don't know if that was maybe part of um, the Allie Edward design collection that year that they offered it, or maybe I purchased those separately. I'm really not sure. But so that is how I have my December files organized. So let's go inside of the 2024 one. So I name it DD 2024 AD collection, um, Paisley Press Christmas. I think this might just be, these might be files that I purchased off of Lilypad. Um, so I didn't purchase them from AED, but even if I did, I think I typically, yeah, Paisley Press 2022 kit that was purchased from um, Allie Edwards company. So we'll see. Like I said, it's not always consistent, but um, they're pretty easy to sort through. All right. So um, I can open this up 
in a different way, but for now, let's just, let's just stick with it right here. Um, you are looking inside of my 2024, um, December daily collection of stuff. This is all from this year's collection. I have a lot of loose items in here that are from the main kit. That's typically how I upload it. As I upload the main kit, I do the, um, the papers first. So, um, always the preview image first. So you can see that on your folder preview and then the 10 by eight papers from the main kit, the journaling cards from the main kit. And then I just start dropping in like items from the main kit. So this is pretty much all from the main kit here. And then things like the gold stars that come in the main kit, I made a folder for those. So you'll see that there is, here we go, gold stars. There's eight of them. They're just all right there. Um, and then I also separated out like the tag, um, the tag items or the vellum items, um, tag phrase strips, I pulled out of the tags. Um, I wanted to, if I was looking for a phrase strip, um, just go there real quickly and not have to sort through um, all of these tags to find them. So in the main kit packaging, the physical product, you will find that those items are all together in the same baggie, but um, I organize them a little differently in my digital space. All right, um, let's make this page real quick. So transparency pack, I know we need. We need the 2024. I prefer um, the one that is not faux gold. Um, let's see, we also need the, bum, 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 the three by eight insert pack has those hearts. Um, there's only one option for those. And then I think that there is the 10 by eight paper that has the hearts on it. Ah, that's in the 10 by eight paper pack, not the main kit, 10 by eight papers. Here we go. There's that. Okay, so we're gonna grab all of these. We're gonna make them bigger. Okay, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna push down my option key. I'm using a Mac. I believe that is an alt key on a PC keyboard, but that's pretty much just you know, pulling your bounding box for your art a little closer to it so that when you're clicking away from it, you're not activating this actual image. Um, so let's see, I want to use Mary and Bright from here. And as you can see, as I run this over here, this transparency card, the 3x8 does not have a white background. So I really don't have to run the background remover on this. I just need to close in my box. And as you can see, there is a little bit of the blue heart showing. So we're gonna go to edit. I'm gonna go to magic erasure, which again is a pro tool. And it's gonna show me my whole thing. Now I know that this green heart down here doesn't matter. I know that all I'm really seeing is the tip right here of the blue. So we're just gonna get rid of this. And we're going to hit erase and it's going to go away. Takes a minute sometimes. Okay, click on the X and now that little blue tip is gone. Um, let's see here. I think, let me just have my little sample. I need that one and that one. Um, so that is that and that guy. Okay. So this, do you see how that has a uh, white background? You can tell it has a white background because whenever you overlay it onto something else, you can see white. So first thing we're gonna do with this is before splitting this apart, we're gonna use the background remover. And voila, it does a very good job very quickly. We're gonna close in on the black one. I guess it might be charcoal. It might even be super dark navy, I'm not really quite sure. And we're going to duplicate this. And then we're going to move this one so that we see, oh, my heart. I think that's what I want. And I'm gonna close in on that a little bit more. <clears throat> okay. All right. So I need to use the magic eraser on both of these. Okay, I know that it is this right here. Goodbye, that needs to go away. And it's this right here. I should go a little bit slower right here so I don't accidentally cut out any of my green heart. And erase. 
doesn't really matter about the rest of it because the box is closed down, so you can't see it anyways. Okay, and click on the X, and that is gone. I'm going to do the same thing to this one. I think it's like the tip of this and this. Let's make sure we get all that. And I think it is this right here is going. Anyways, <laughs> oh, it's kind of, you know what? I'm so sorry. I was looking at this and I'm like, what is taking so long? But it's done now. Sorry about that. Okay, so now I've got those pieces and I believe I also need to go over here and get the um, die cut hearts. I don't know why I just clicked on that. I meant to click on see all. Um, let me go here to the die cut bundle and I want the hearts from here. I think I want the big blue one and I think I want the green one. Let's, let's just look. Oh, and I want the red one too. All right, all right. So I'm gonna zoom out just a smidge so I can see the whole artboard. We're gonna put 2024 in the center. And uh, I think that's over there. Keep in mind that uh, I am recreating this. It's probably not gonna look exactly the same. I'm gonna send this to the back. Same thing with this. I'm just gonna kind of position this, I think. Maybe over here, and this guy needs to be much bigger. I'm going to click on both of those, use my layering tool, send to back. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put more twinkle right over here. I'm just gonna make this guy a little bit bigger. I like it when they overlap a little bit. He needs to be a little bit bigger. Okay, so this is like the fun part when you get to like play with scale and contrast and how the things overlap and how they interact with each other. Um, I think is always super fun because the way I create it right now is not gonna be the same way that I created it before. It might be slight variation it might be very close i'm gonna try to make it very close for you since you know you're doing that i'm doing this so that you can see how i need it i think it's about right here that's up oh yeah i'm a little off okay it's okay though so this needs to be bigger this will be up here and this is going to be more over here this is going to be here. Okay. All right. We're going to call that, we're going to call that good. It's not exactly the same, but I think it's fine. So I don't like how there's so much white right here. So this came from the die cut bundle. I'm going to use the background remover on it and see what happens. Nothing happened. I think it's because it does not view this white as a background. So it does not get rid of the white edging that you're gonna see on some of the trees, on some of the, you know, the other elements throughout this digital kit. So in order to deal with this and get less white here, I'm gonna edit and I'm gonna use magic eraser tool. And I'm just gonna kind of go nice and slow. I don't remember exactly where the blue comes out of, but if I do this whole side right here, I should get it. It does not have to be perfect. Um, and erase. <clears throat> I'm gonna close this. Okay, it's pretty darn good. I'm okay with this. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, so this is what I did at first, and I like it. And I think that you could take this and you could group all this together and you could put it in on the top and you could 
put your reason why below here. You could print it out on vellum and you could just stick it in just like this. And um, it could just be your um, first like vellum overlay and behind it. Maybe it's a full page photo. You could print it on transparency. There's a ton of stuff that you can do. I think it looks really nice just by itself. But because I like my albums to be very photo heavy and very photo centric, I added a spot for a photo. And like I said, that does not mean that it's going to end up like that. So we're just gonna push this down to the bottom. We're gonna go over here to the top, go to elements, choose the rectangle frame. And I just made it go all the way across. I do like things interacting with the edges. So I'm gonna come down to this um, red heart and kind of come in on that a little bit. And the last thing I'm going to add here is a little bit of the word phrase washi tape, which obviously will be digital um, if I can find the folder. This Day in the Life 2024 folder, it keeps tricking me. Oh, maybe I'm here? Yes, no, that's another year. Okay, die cut bundle. Here we go. Yes, thank you. All right, so washi tape, totally loving the washi tape. And I'm just gonna make it big enough to go right across and go up. All right, and I'm gonna call this page ready to go. Oh, except for this little guy right here. So that's just a word phrase, <coughs> excuse me, strip. And um, you can easily plop those down. I learned this trick from Kim. Kim Hurst. Um, I was really annoyed that it was like a full sheet because I was having to like recrop it each time and replace it. And she was like, no, 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 that's not how you do it. So let me show you how easy it is. It's fantastic. So you find whichever word or phrase you want to use, you crop it down to that and you put it where you want. And then instead of putting this here again, like what I was doing and I was losing my mind because it was tedious and I was having to do it every single time. And then getting these to be like the same height and the same width was really annoying. But Kim showed me a different way and it's fantastic. So you just take this, if you want a different word and you duplicate it and double click on it and shift this around to find the word that you want. And if it happens to be shorter, it's okay just make your box, adjust your box. But now these are the same height. The words are the same size. And all I had to do, I have access, full access to all of them. They're all within this one little spot. All I have to do is move this guy around to get different words. So thank you, Kim. It's been a lifesaver. So um, that is how you can do that right there. And then let's see, what else can I show you how to make? Um, this is pretty self-explanatory. I don't think that this right here is the three by eight, um, cards, three by eight insert pack. That is, um, this guy right here. And I used the background remover tool on it. As you can see, it comes in with like a peachy cream. Um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, that noise that you're hearing right now is my daughter dumping out some Legos. So um, maybe she can be a little quieter. I'm not sure. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bothersome, but she's she's doing Legos behind me. Um, all right, so it's like a creamy peachy kind of color and we're gonna use the background remover and make it go away. So now it is gone. Okay, oops, but don't get too crazy because that happens. Okay. So that is really the hardest thing about this page was just getting the background remover to make that cream go away. And then I resized this and then I dropped in this. This is one of the tags um, with the word phrases. And this is the gold glitter star. This is just a little photo collage right over here that I put in um, just in case I want to do a 10 by eight, you know, uh, just right into the page protector full page kind of print out. I can add some photos over there. I could change it to be a different color, add some journaling. I could do one large photo. I could cut this down and just do 
um, this as an insert with a little tab on the end would be super cute. Maybe a photo on the back. There's tons and tons of options for this. Okay, so before I show you, I need to show you this ornament. Let me show you how to make this other page. Um, oh, hey, I knew that was there. Um, okay, nothing crazy special about this, but let me show you this page. Uh, let's see, we are going to start with a clean page. First thing that I did was I found my, I think it's transparency pack. Yep, found my ornaments. Uh, yeah going to drop in the um, loving card, which I think is from the main kit. Maybe I passed it. Um, oh, you know what? It's not from main kit. It's a specialty card. Uh, see, I think it's printed on like transparency or something. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to use the position. I'm going to change it to six inches wide and four inches tall. I'm going to put it up here in this corner. Um, now I am going to use the width of this as a guide to figure out how big I want these um, ornaments. You want them to go off of the side, um, both sides. So I should make them a little bigger. And I do want them to go off the bottom a little, a little bit. So that is the size I think that I want them. And now that I have them that size, I'm going to close the bounding box down because visually I like it to look clean and I want my digital document to reflect pretty closely however it's going to look um, in real life. So, all right, so now that we have this, now let's go up here and look. Um, all right, all right. So I want to replace this ornament, this ornament, and this ornament. So that would be this ornament, this ornament, and this ornament. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna to go to edit. I'm gonna to go to magic eraser and I'm just gonna erase them. Now, keep in mind that this does not actually alter your file. It, I mean, it alters the file that you are working on obviously, but it does not alter this 10 by eight file. You can still use it as it is. It's just altering the instance that shows up on this particular page. So you don't have to worry about whether or not you are deleting these three ornaments from your life forever because you're not, I promise. Oops, I got a little crazy there. Um, darn it. If I hit clear, it's going to clear everything. Yeah, that's annoying. Okay, so that just means I need to go a little slower because I accidentally erased some of the ornament that I wanted to keep. All right, now you're gone. And erase you, slowly go right here. Okay, and this one. And then this other row of them, this other column over here on the right, it doesn't really matter because they're cropped out anyways. All right, so now we're gonna erase. Okay. So now we're going to go into the specialty. Oh, not that one. Tricking me again. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. We're going to grab this guy. Okay. This is from the specialty journaling cards. We're going to size it so that this ornament outline is the same size as this ornament outline, you know, roughly. Okay. And I want that center one. So we're going to crop it as close as we can so that we only have to do minimal erasing. We don't have to do a background remover because it's already a clear transparent background. And now we know we just need to do those four little corner areas. So we're going to hit edit, magic eraser. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to get rid of that. Come on. And that guy. And that guy. Okay. 
And now we're going to take that. We're going to put one right here. Oh, you know what I just noticed? That I used the faux fake gold foil one for this. Oh, dear. That's okay. Because this is this is just a teaching. This is a teaching exercise right here that we're doing. Um, but typically, I would use the same file. So see how this is not faux gold and see how this is faux gold. So just pick one and use, make them both the same. Um, I prefer the not faux gold one. You can use whichever one you like. Okay, so there are those in place. Okay, now we need to edit this. Make this a different color. Um, there's a couple different things that we can do to that. So um, I'm going to go to edit. We're going to go to do a tone. Um, the first way I did it down here to get this is I just chose custom. I made the shadows be like a, chose one of these like brown, tannish, goldish, fake colors. Okay. And then I made this be white. And then you can go here and as you can see, like this is way lighter than this and it's because this is white. So these two colors mixing together and, and depending on how the art looks is what is going to determine how this looks for you. So then you can take this and you can kind of, you know, move it around here if you want it warmer, cooler, browner, oranger. Um, but I think that that is pretty darn close. Oh, not at all. What was I thinking? Ah. All right. So that is if you do the highlights and the shadows that way. We're going to push that off to the side. So now let me flip them. So we're going to go back to edit. We're going to use, we're going to edit duotone. We are going to make the highlights, which is the white areas, be that brown color. And we're going to make the shadows be white. And spring grab this. Just around. Super white. Okay, but you can see that by doing, changing the different, the highlights and the shadows here, um, flip flopping them will give you a completely different look and how you can go through and edit like this to get a completely different look, just depending on what you want. Once you get the background, or once you get this to be the color you want it to be, go ahead and put a rectangle box, select your swatch up here, use the eyedropper tool, um, and select this background color to match it. Put it down. I'm going to extend it to its width here, height, and you're going to send it to the back. So layer, send to back. Okay, so that is how you can do this right here. Now, let me show you how to get it to look like this. So we already know that we don't need the piece that I just sent to the back because it's a white background. Let's go to position. We'll go find that. We'll delete it. Okay, this one, we're going to remove the background. Okay, so that's leaving just the loving brush stroke. You are going to go to edit again. We're going to edit that duotone. We are going to just choose the brown, leaving the other one white. And we're going to kind of go over here to the red area and moving this around and trying to find you know the right red is difficult um, because remember this is a duotone and so that red is built off of white uh, now let's see i think okay 
think that when you do that, you are losing a little bit of the brush strokiness, but you could definitely make both colors or both swatches, the highlights and shadows, the same color. And you see how you get a much more solid look as opposed, as opposed to as opposed to a brushy look. So that's an option also. You could do two different colors. See how it's changing as I'm adjusting this. So I'm gonna go back to white and just adjust my red in here to get it to be you know kind of what I want. I'd rather have it be darker than too orange. Um, so here we go, I'm fine with that. We're gonna delete this. Okay, and then the rest of it is just a matter of building um, building what you want on the page. So um, in some case, I put a photo. So let's do that. I'm gonna go up here to elements, find circle photo. You're gonna size it down. Now, when you go to put your photo in this frame, the frame needs to be on top. So it needs to be like this, okay? So you can drop a photo in. Because once you take this and you layer this behind, then you can't actually get to the frame anymore. So you can't drop your photo into that. So if you wanna design it the way that you know I have here and you have your photo frames there ready, just remember that when it comes time to actually put your photo in it, you're gonna to want to take click on your frame, or I'm sorry, click on your ornament or the big sheet of ornaments. Um, I guess it's not the big sheet of ornaments that's the problem, it's this one. Click on the big one, click on the three dots, go to layer and send backwards. Oh, maybe send all the way to the back. Send to back. So then it's going to get your photo frame. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, so this is now layered on top of it. So it's still not is still not available for us. So you just gotta make sure that your layering is, your photo frame needs to be on top so it's accessible. So sometimes you just gotta mess around with layering. Um, if you need to better visualize letter, layering, you can go to position and you can see how they're all layered right here. So what we're working with is we're working with this right here. So this, um, we will also have one of these for here and we'll have one of these for here. We wanna make sure that the layering is like this where the photo frame is on top of the ornament. Okay, so then the rest of it is just a matter of adding a little bit of text. This story right here is actually from a three by four um, December story, the three by four card. I just cropped down on the story part of it. I dropped in the text, just a little placeholder text. This right here, again, the documenting the season comes from that word phrase sticker or strip sheet, um, word phrase sheet. Um, this is the, the, what is this? The washi tape. And this is one large photo. I suspect that this is the layout that I will use to document a story in December, but I'm not positive. Time will tell. This is a little bit more of, you know, detailed, super close up three shots that are just three random stories. And then I tell a little story about those photos. And then this becomes more of a decorative page and less of a photo heavy page for me. Um, let's see, this is just a matter, like I said, of dropping in the squares. So I pre, I prepped that for, um, for possibly using in that way. And let's see, let's show you how to do this one. Okay. So this is going to be the last thing I show you here. We're going to duplicate this page. Um, I'm going to grab this. This is a portion of the tree from one of the other pages, just so I could get a color sample. We're going to click on this. We are going to go to edit. We are going to use the adjustment section. So just adjust. This would be where you would um, adjust photo colors. If you need to brighten your photo, provide more contrast, um, bump up the saturation, any of those things, this is the area that you would do that in. So um, I'm gonna change the temperature of this, make it a little warmer. I am going to increase the contrast and I'm increasing the contrast in hopes of getting the, this area more white, but 
um, I, I never get it whiter because I'm using the temperature. So if I go cool with it, do you see how it gets a little bit of a bluish tinge to a little grayish tinge in the white area? If I go warm, it's, it's applying a warmth layer, a yellowish layer to the entire piece. And that's why it's turning a little bit more cream in those sections, but I think I'm okay with cream. Uh, there's a couple pieces in the kit that have a cream look to them. Um, there's a little craft in here. So I'm fine with a little bit of a cream background. I'm gonna adjust the shadows also. And we're gonna go negative 29 with those. Um, the blacks, we're gonna pump up the blacks in hopes of getting this a little bit darker. Um, so you see how that green went from being more of an avocado green to a really dark green. Uh, I don't know what's going on right there with that line. Edit. Oh, I did not mean to do that. We're going to X out of that. Um, I meant to hit edit. Here we go. We're going to go back to this because I'm not quite sure what happened with my fingers. Um, we're going to adjust the saturation to four. And we're going to see go down here sorry I keep hitting the wrong thing um, I'm going to choose a filter and choose poster Let's see how now poster the poster filter is already red so I couldn't make that a different a different look let's go back to where that was uh, that was filter see all I went all the way to the bottom but you can just play with all of these that's how I originally got it I literally took me like 30 to 40 minutes to figure out how to do this um, to the acceptable fashion in which I was happy with um, and really I kind of took you the backwards way I'm like, sorry I should have applied the filter first and then made all of the adjustments. So that's what I recommend you do is you start by finding a filter and it gives you a preview of what it's gonna look like and how it's gonna turn the color. So start with your, start with that and then go to the adjustment area to adjust the contrast and the blacks and the temperature and all of that. So apologies, um, but that is how I got to this point here. I just forgot to write that down in my notes. So um, at this point, you can go back into edit, adjust, and if you want the temperature to be, you know, a little cooler, um, you can adjust that here. If you want there to be less contrast, you can adjust that here. You see how it gets flatter? Um, so you can adjust that here, your shadows. Um, but what's happening is it's adjusting it as a whole. It's not adjusting it in... Uh, and just the red area, it's adjusting it everywhere. So just go through here and um, mess with these and see what happens. I brought in this red tree so that I could kind of match um, the color visually. And by the time I was done making these adjustments, I was pretty happy with how similar it was. Um, it's not dead on but it is definitely acceptable in my book. So um, let's see, I think that uh, those are just a couple of things that I wanted to show you. Um, I think one last thing I wanted to do, now that my daughter is done crinkling all of her plastic, is um, pull in a page layout from another album that I've already created, so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. So let's go over here to projects. Um, I know it's from a December daily album, so I'm going to find my, all of those are inside of a memory keeping projects folder at December stories. It is from last December. So December, 2023, I'm going to click on that. This is going to show me my entire file from that particular, uh, setup. So like this page, it is a page design that I use frequently. I don't need to reset that up. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to drop right into this. I'm going to show you how I'm going to edit it in a minute. Okay. So let's, let's find this one right here. Okay. So I think these two are good. 
All right, so now that I've got those from other albums, I obviously don't want these pictures, so I'm gonna delete them. Uh, I may or may not want that, so I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna delete that. This is not the journaling card we're using this year, so I'm gonna delete that. I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna delete this because I'm not exactly sure it's the same one. Uh, it looks the same, Remington Noiseless 9.5, so we'll leave it, okay. All right, so now, I did not have to reinvent these. I did not have to recreate them, but I already have them now in my album because I was able to easily pull them from another album. Let's do the same thing from a six by eight album and see what happens. Because, you know, whether or not you want to do a six by eight insert or you want to um, make a 10 by eight page based on a six by eight, um, page it's completely up to you and, and um, you can pull them in the design will go either way I don't think that it's going to care about the um, I don't think it's going to care about the size it's going to resize it to fit but I don't think it's going to matter that it is um, going on a smaller area okay why do I not have okay there we go so 2022 is a six by eight album. We're going to open it. And let's scroll through to, I don't know, something. Boom, 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 boom. Okay. Let's go here. Ah, so it takes a six by eight design and it plops it right in the center. So I would probably push it over to the side. And I would probably, oh, oh, bad, bad, Jessica. I do not want you doing this. Do not build your files this way. So you saw what just happened. And now I can't use my undo button, but let's do this. Okay. So when I clicked on the photos up here and I deleted them, it left my frames. When I click on the photos down here, I'm going to delete them. They just go away completely. Do you know why? I'm going to tell you. Because I did not use frames to build this page. So that means if I want to reuse this page easily without confusing myself, I need to make frames in place of these photos. Now I could go over here. Let's go to my uploads area. I have some random photos over here. I could grab this photo, drag it over, and put it right on top of that photo, and then it would take its place, right? You saw how that happened? I'm grabbing a photo, I'm literally putting it there. Or I guess I could put it here, and then I grab it, and I drag it. Nope, it doesn't work like that. Do you see how it's not going in those areas? Because those areas are not photo frames. It's really annoying. Um, because I like to drop in my pages like I showed you here and then delete the photos so that I don't get confused about are these photos from this year or last year or what year. And I'll, you know, I'm left with photo frames. But because I didn't build that this way, I am left with blank when this happens. So the way that I would recreate this is I would just go to elements. I'm going to click on this guy. Literally work on top of it and not have to do any measurements. And I would just rebuild it on top. And luckily Canva kind of like snaps to the edges of things. All right, so click on that. That, 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 and we're gonna right click, layer, send to back. Now I'm gonna delete this, 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 and this. I'm gonna delete this text because clearly it's not the same. And I'm probably gonna delete, you know, this too. Okay, so now I have that. And um, I could reuse this page if I wanted. I could put another photo area over here and maybe this becomes a pattern paper. Um, spot so maybe I just I get a wild hair and I'm like oh the ho 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 paper will look really super right there um, and I can go over here 
and find it and drop it in. And I can drop it in and out with other papers and all kinds of things because now I have a photo frame. Um, where is that paper? I'm losing my mind. Um, here we go. Ooh, that's a lot. It's really pretty, but it's a lot. Oh, ho, ho, ho. All right, okay. I think that is all I have to share with you for today. I'm gonna to continue to use this file to create things when I get inspired. I'm gonna continue getting in here and dabbling between you know what I've already made or, um, or new things that I'm making and tweaking them. And um, rarely do I ever sit down and create something in just one setting. I oftentimes will do a little something and then I will come back to it and tweak it a little bit and I'll adjust it and I'll change it and I'll add to it. And, and um, keep in mind that when you're designing digitally that you have a whole bunch of fun physical products that you can also add. So when you're designing, make sure that you're leaving space for those uh, physical items. You could measure them. You could mock them up on here. I can measure the gold stars that are in that file to see, like I said, the same size as a quarter and then put a circle the size of a quarter or size these, the, the stars that I have digitally here um, to the exact size and place them on here just to make sure that I'm happy with, you know, the size, the placement, the amount of them. So, um, yeah, it's a really great tool. If you have any questions about any of the things that I have done here, please leave me a comment and I will get back to you. Thanks so much.